Breaking is BBC Radio Shropshire Breakfast. Campaigners fighting the proposals for pylons to link Shropshire to wind farms in Mid Wells have been meeting to try and raise the profile of their campaign. National Grid says they're needed to carry power from the wind farms, but most people living along the proposed route don't want them. Clive Knowles from Shropshire Against Pylons and from British Iron Works Centre uh, could have a pylon on their land. Uh, Jonathan Wilkinson also joins us and is a campaigner. So um, tell us here about what happened at the meeting last night. Good morning, Claire. The... Good morning. Good morning. The meeting went off extremely well. Of course, you're always anxious with a public meeting. We've never really hosted one before about the numbers that are actually going to arrive, but we had a phenomenal amount of people, so it, that was a big relief. This seems to be dragging on, because I talked to you about this last year, you did, you and, did. and the concern for you was you will um, have a pylon slap-bang in the middle of your land. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, the, the, I mean, we we moved over to Oswald Street sort of 13 years ago, and... We've create. We took over a museum from Ironbridge that I think everybody knows about now. And we've got all the we've got all the sculptures there at, on, at our site at Aston Oswald Street, and of course we we're ready to sort of start this sculpture park and put them all in place. And then you get these letters arriving, and and all of a sudden you realise that you're really in the sights for National Grid and having a an enormous pile on right in the middle of the sculpture park that will be. And so uh, we... You were flexible, though, because you, you suggested yeah. them moving it, didn't you? No, I did. I, I mean, we, we would, we've certainly suggested a number of things, but, of course, opting for it going underground would be wonderful if it had to come across us, but also working with them to create a, something that was a sculpture in its own right, something like a stag or, or a, a Shropshire man dragging the cables across the, the Shropshire countryside, <laughs> something really spectacular, but they've refused... And and really aren't willing to listen to any of those ideas. Jonathan, how did you get involved in all this? Um, I started as a, as a community councillor um, and set up a group called Montgomery Against Pylons when we first found out about the National Grid proposals in our part of uh, Mid Wales about three years ago. Um, set up a group called called MAP. Um, we've been fighting this for, say, about three years um, and are now very keen to help our, our friends in, in Shropshire who perhaps have been a little bit slow waking up to the to the threat, but they're certainly there now and, and, and we'll be working very strongly together. One of the things you said is uh, the yeah. National Grid have always been very much not really prepared to listen have, have, th have not, things changed not really no no i mean we've had we've had several meetings with national grid at those meetings i think that first they 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 didn't realize that we were such a sizable employer on the outskirts of Oswald Street. they certainly didn't uh, realize that that we had all of these sort of sculpture park plans and and what we were able to do for tourism in north shropshire which is i mean we're already bringing great numbers of visitors from all over the country to see what we do and, of course, the Spoon Gorillas helped marvellously with that. But uh, I think now that they recognise that, I think that there might be some uh, movement in their plans and they might be looking possibly at rerouting it. I think the people of Shropshire and the apathy over it not affecting them, it can still affect them, it could still re be rerouted and redirected and it could really... Uh, the people that are sort of sitting on the bylines listening to all of this, it could still affect them, and so they should really attend these meetings. Jonathan, what do you think the chances are of, of anything changing, though, anything positive coming out of this? Um, well, I think there's two two lines to our strategy. One is to stop the wind farms, which are creating the need for the national grid involvement, and we've been fighting a public inquiry in Welsh for about a year. That's now ended, and we hope to, to hear uh, a positive result from that towards the end of the year, maybe next year. Um, Secondly, is trying to liaise with National Grid. As Clive has said, they're not very good at, I don't believe, um, in engaging with communities. Um, they're not very good at, at, you know, thinking outside the box. And, you know, people have been a bit naive, I think, have been very reasonable with National Grid. They've got huge powers and, and I think have, have abused that, um, that trust. And, uh, you know, we are very, very keen to put up a strong, strong uh, resistance to National Grid. Briefly then, what next? Well, I think I think the next step is to is to hold another public meeting. We'll 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 invite National Grid along. We'll ask them to speak, and um, we're hoping for a much greater attendance on the next. I mean, we lost count last night after sort of counting eighty cars onto the onto the site. 
Um, but on the, I think on the next the next invitation to attend, we're hoping for a lot more people to arrive and realise that it is a real scar across Stropshire. Good to talk to both of you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming in. Clive Knowles and Jonathan Wilkinson.